Putrajaya has gazetted an order to begin the implementation of the contentious departure levy for departing air travellers on September 1st. Rates start from 8 ringgit to as high as 150 ringgit. According to the departure levy rate of departure levy order 2019, gazetted on July 31st, passengers flying economy to ASEAN destinations will have to pay a levy of 8 ringgit, while those flying beyond will have to pay 20 ringgit. Passengers flying on all other classes will pay a departure levy of 50 ringgit to ASEAN ASEAN countries and 150 ringgit for the rest of the world. The Departure Levy Act was initially scheduled on June 1st but was subsequently postponed. Originally, the charges proposed during Budget 2019 were 40 ringgit for outbound air travellers to non ASEAN countries and 20 ringgit for those flying to ASEAN countries. Since the new tax was proposed last November, the Air Asia Group and the International Air Transport Association have been urging the government to reconsider given the potential impact. Based on IATA's analysis, the levy would reduce the number of departing international air passengers by up to 835,000 per year, decreasing the aviation sector's GDP contribution by up to 419 million US dollars. Malaysia Marine and Heavy Engineering Holdings managed to narrow its losses for the second quarter of FY19 to 9.5 million ringgit compared with 49.5 million ringgit previously. This was due to both its heavy engineering and marine segments during better during the quarter. Top line improved 24% to 276.4 million ringgit. Numbers were also better on a half-year basis with MHB posting a 38.8 million ringgit loss compared with 74.8 million the year before. Revenue for the first half of FY19 grew by 16.6% to 479.6 million ringgit. Going forward, MHB says that the outlook for the second half of the year remains uncertain as the US-China trade war drags on, economic growth slows and geopolitical tensions continue to simmer. On the upside, MHB MD and CEO Wan Mashita Wan Abdulassani says the outlook for the marine business continues to improve and that the LNG market is healthy, underpinned by export project startups in the US and Australia. Maxis reported a drop in net profit for the fifth straight quarter, with earnings for the second quarter of FY19 coming in 17% lower to 397 million ringgit. Revenue for the quarter also inched down 1.8% to 2.21 billion, compared with 2.25 billion ringgit last year. The decline was due to lower average revenue per user and termination of network sharing agreement, higher staff and resource costs, finance costs, depreciation and amortization. Despite the softer numbers, Maxis declared a second interim dividend of 5 cent per share, which brings its total payout for the first half of FY19 to 10 cent. The weaker quarter dragged first half earnings down by 19.5% to 806 million ringgit, while revenue dipped marginally by 1% to 4.44 billion ringgit. Regardless of headwinds, the group said guidance remains unchanged for the full FY19. In a statement, Max CEO Gehan Ut said the quarter saw the telco making headway in its converged ambitions with the launch of new fibre speeds. The delivering smart solutions for enterprises and championing Industry 4.0 initiatives through 5G. Post Malaysia has signed a collaboration agreement with China's STO Express International to jointly explore cross-border cooperation. In a joint statement, the two companies said the cooperation will provide businesses in Southeast Asia, especially SMEs, an end-to-end logistics platform positioning Malaysia as a gateway to the ASEAN region. Post Malaysia Group CEO Syed Mohamad Najib Syed Mohamad Noor said this tie-up would help to strengthen its position and that it would help SMEs accelerate the growth of e e-commerce in the country and contribute positively to GDP. He added that it would be an excellent ground to promote Malaysian products to China and vice versa. Post Malaysia said the project kickoff will include the integration of an IT system between the two parties and the launch of the pilot delivery model plan by the middle of this month. Shanghai-based STO is one of China's five major courier services with a 10% share in the China market according to reports.
Datuk Tan Eng Boon, who is accused of bribing former FT Minister Datuk Sri Tengku Adnan Tengku Manso, has sought to dismiss an application by the prosecution to have his case jointly heard. Tan's lawyer, Faisal Modin, argued that a joint trial will bring prejudice to Tan as he will lose the opportunity to call Kunan as a witness. Deputy Public Prosecutor Julia Ibrahim said the joint trial was called on the grounds that there is unity of purpose and design on the facts of both cases. Tan is accused of giving Kunan 1 million ringgit for the approval of nucleus properties, now known as Paragon City Development, to increase the plot ratio relating to development of Lot 228 along Jalan Samara. If found guilty, Tan may be jailed up to 20 years and fined no less than five times the amount of gratification or 10,000 ringgit, whichever is higher. The decision for today's application will be heard on August 9th.